case, you know, we're trying not to, but at the same time, you know, it, it's, it is the dumpster fire the next door that you just can't stop looking at. Uh, they didn't charge him with murder one because murder one would, the, the legal requirement, the threshold is, is that he left the station house that day intending to kill somebody. And I read that and I'm going, the fact that we have to gild the lily about, somebody died, you know, at a certain point, you know, we have 15 different levels of, you know, you killed somebody, but it wasn't this or wasn't that. It's like somebody died on your watch. You're responsible. You know, that's, that's my take. And, and I understand why legally we have, you know, layers upon layers upon layers because, you know, guy breaks into your house and you shoot him while it was self-defense. But, yeah, you still killed the guy. I mean, this isn't one of those, you know, slap on the wrist, don't do it again. There should be some form of, hey, we as a society don't want this. But we, we, we the people uh, decide collectively, uh, no, we understand that this has been uh, finessed by everybody all the way up to the Supreme Court, but there's too much finesse and not enough justice there. Uh, one of the examples that I use, and again, you're talking to somebody who has a completely unique uh, take on this, uh, the guy that, uh, the uh, incel that uh, uh, drove the van down uh, the sidewalk in Toronto on uh, Young Street, and killed like 15, 17 people. Um, it's like to me, okay, habeas corpus, uh, you have to present uh, a given series of facts. They have to have their moment in front of the judge, decide whether uh, they need to be incarcerated or they need to be let go, because that's what separates uh, democracy from the totalitarian outfit. Um, but at the same time, when they invented habeas corpus, uh, they didn't have cell phones, and they didn't have a closed circuit TV, and they didn't have 24-7 uh, CNN. So in a situation like that, it's like, okay, there's a guy who has just driven all the, all the way down Young Street, um, driven, intentionally driven over 15 or 20 people, uh, you know, eight and Eight or ten of them are dead. A bunch of them are going to be paralyzed. The van finally stopped for whatever reason, and the guy got out. Uh, to my way of thinking, that calls for summary execution. It's not, here's the alleged perpetrator. It's like, no, I think there was only one white van driving down the young street sidewalk and killing people. So pull him out of the car, pull him out of the van, put a bullet in his head, and you're all done. And it's like, that's the justice there. It's, it's uh, no, you don't want to have a trial for that person. You don't want this remanded and, and move forward and uh, we're having this appeal and that appeal is being made and all of these people who are, you know, paralyzed or seriously uh, wounded for life are having to keep going to the same courthouse and sitting there all day and finding out, uh, no, they had a such and such piece of paper presented, so he's not going to be showing up, and now it's been remanded to uh, five months from now. It's like you can't, uh, it's, not, it's not a matter of blaming the victim. You can't torture the victim, which is what we're doing with this habeas corpus thing. The same thing in this situation with uh, um, Officer Chauvin. It's, uh, you have disgraced your uniform. You've disgraced yourself as a police officer. You've disgraced policing worldwide. Uh, there used to be, if you have even a scrap of personal honor left, here's a 38 revolver, go out back to the station house and get rid of yourself because we don't need you. And there's no reason that we have to go through anything on your behalf. We, we saw what you did. It's on uh, the cell phone footage. Here's the nine minutes. It's not a matter of, well, there's two different sides to this story. I know there's not. So if there isn't, then I think it's, it's time to get back to uh, summary execution in those situations. But that's, that's just me. That, uh, it would have to be in a situation where... 
nuts. I mean, I'm just thinking about, you know, Charles Manson got the death sentence and then California repealed the death penalty after they had sentenced him. And, you know, he, he lived for, what, 30, 40 years, you know, on the taxpayer's dime. And it's like, you know, everybody agreed, you know, he was supposed to, you know, go. And, I mean, I understand that most capital cases nowadays, there is so much, it's so drawn out, and that it's, you know, and, you know, we want to dot every I and cross every T and make sure beyond a reasonable doubt that, no, this guy did that. But like you said, I mean, I mean, there's nine minutes of cell phone footage of this guy kneeling on somebody's neck. I mean, I don't think it's going to take 12 people very long to go, oh, yeah, no, he did it. Right. Well, you would hope not, but that's, that's, another, that's another problem entirely. It's like I think there's a, uh, a crowd culpability as well. Like when you do have uh, cell phone footage, uh, I think that you are obligated bring out your cell phone and photograph that along with everybody else. They need it from as many different angles as they can possibly get it from uh, in order to establish definitively, yes, this is, this is what this situation was. Um, I would never carry a cell phone for exactly the reason that I don't like what cell phones are and, and what they represent as this really, really creepy totalitarian thing that everybody's just uh, viewing as a toy. I mean, uh, I wouldn't carry a cell phone for that reason, but I think that in a situation like that, okay, here's all the people that were standing in the vicinity that first of all didn't pull out their cell phone. Um, so consequently, you can track that. You can say, okay, these people were in the vicinity and didn't do anything about it. I mean, if a guy is being knelt on for, on his neck for nine minutes, there's nine minutes there to go. Uh, everybody, keep filming this. Don't turn off your cell phone no matter what. But I'm taking this fucker out and probably getting the crap beaten out of me by four cops. But at a specific point, the cops are going to... Uh, Brains are going to get out ahead of adrenaline, and they're going to go, no, everybody's filming this, and now we not only just killed this guy or almost killed this guy, now we're, start, we're trying to kill the guy that saved his life. So it's one of those, um, we the people, uh, we the people, we're not, uh, you know, you don't want to go around tackling cops as a habitual thing. But if you see a cop kneeling on somebody's neck for nine minutes and saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, then uh, at a specific point, you have an obligation to do something or you become partly culpable in the homicide. Sorry, you know, you're, you didn't go to that location to, to have that happen and to go, wow, what am I supposed to do now? Well, the right thing, uh, the same as... Uh, Officer Chauvin did the wrong thing for nine minutes. Well, everybody who didn't tackle Officer